Arts. Well, joining us is Dr. Alan Mendoza, Executive Director of the Henry Jackson Society, a national security think tank. Alan, great to have you on, as always. Uh, I mean, I've been saying for a long time, if people have come out in public much sooner and said there are elements of this march with some pretty dodgy connections, then perhaps so many well-meaning, soppy, middle-class wokatrons wouldn't be on them. <laughs> Couldn't say that better than you, Alex. Um, I, I think this is a very interesting story, though, because these former Home Secretaries and others have decided to obviously weigh in on a, a definition that we don't yet know uh, what the definition is. So it's curious they're coming in on that basis. And, and basically, as you've just pointed out, if we were just open about what extremism was in this country and named it for what it was, rather than you know trying to create strange definitions that give a nudge, nudge, wink, wink, view of it. And if we say, for example, that Islamists uh, and the far right are the kind of extremists we want to ban from getting government money and uh, government platforms, that would surely be easier, wouldn't it? So I'm hoping that the definition will turn out to be quite simple and easy to understand. Everyone will go, oh, there was nothing to worry about at all, because those people are obviously extremist. I don't know what Mr Goh's plans are, but what I would hope uh, is that uh, they will open the gate to a more sensible and transparent discussion about extremism. So we had on our show on Friday Paul Scully, the former London minister, who several days before had said, everybody knows there are no-go areas for Jews uh, in certain Muslim areas of both London and Birmingham. Uh, the howl of outrage was deafening. How dare you can't say that? Absolutely not. No, no, no. To the extent that Paul Scully had to apologise. Then we had the Home Office, uh, an official uh, terrorism advisor to the Home Office, and stood up and said, yeah, well, there are no-go areas in uh, Birmingham, London and other cities uh, for Jews uh, when we're talking about uh, Muslim areas. So the whole of London yeah. was a no-go well, well, zone Jews yeah, during exactly, the protests. Exactly. So my point is, Alan, uh, do you feel confident that these politicians who love to censor themselves, love to say you can't possibly suggest there are no-go areas when they know full well there are, do you think we will somehow create an open atmosphere where these very important issues can be debated openly and sensibly? Because they're not being uh, debated openly and sensibly at the moment. We're shutting ourselves down. Well, we are, but what, what I will say in relation to some of the comments we heard last week, firstly, Robin Simcox's view wasn't that the whole of London was a no-go zone. His, his view was that central London during the demonstrations are a no-go zone. That much is plainly obvious. Um, and for all the people arguing against that, uh, it, it, you know, I would encourage them to, I don't know, put on a, uh, a yarmulke or a skull cap on your head, at where take an Israeli flag and see how far you'll get in that area, and then you'll discover that it is indeed a no-go zone. So that's you know, plainly true, and it's ridiculous that people are arguing about it. Um, for Paul Scully's comments, I think, uh, you know, it is certainly true that there are certain areas, I think, in London and Birmingham, which may well be Muslim majority areas, uh, where, again, if you were to wear that yarmulke and that Israel flag, you would be in trouble, OK, in those areas. So, again, you know, you, you look at it. But I think part of this is the language we use in discussing these uh, questions. I think we should be talking about, you know, extremism in the general and the round. We point out, obviously, specific examples of it. That's very important. But we also don't want news headlines about the comments. We want news outlet, you know, headlines about the actions taken to stop extremism. And I rather worry that everyone's got too addicted to calling out extremism and not addicted enough to solving extremism. And that's where we really need the action to happen. I'm hoping this definition will help us get down the path of can we start to solve the extremism problem in this country? And can we do so in a way where everyone acknowledges there is an extremism problem and that the obvious step to be taken to fight it will now be taken. I mean, the other side of this coin, some might say, is this concept of blasphemy, which is being raised. My understanding is that the Labour Party themselves have proposed amending things like our human rights legislation to include uh, things like Islamophobia as part of that, which in some respects uh, comes down to what is blasphemy and whether we should ever have any sort of blasphemy rules in this country, given that, well, frankly, you can say whatever you like about Christianity, you can say whatever you like about Hinduism, but, you know, that protect yourself if you try and say, anything slightly uncomfortable about Islam? Well, I think there's, again, another very interesting story. The uh, commissioner uh, for extremism has looked at this uh, area and produced a report saying that, you know, blasphemy is a rising problem, or rather people trying to uh, stop others' so-called blaspheming is a rising problem in the UK. 
And again, this comes down to this whole argument about whether the definition of anti-Muslim hatred should be anti-Muslim hatred, which is a straightforward and obvious definition that all of us can get behind, or the sort of mealy mouth Islamophobia, which of course suggests, because it's in the name, that if you criticise Islam as opposed to Muslims, that you are deemed to be anti-Muslim. Now, as you've pointed out, Alex, we've spent hundreds of years trying to get out of the blasphemy cul-de-sac and gotten to a point in fairly recent history where you can say anything about religions and go, it's an ideology like any other, and I can critique it, support it, but I can't be, you know, sort of, uh, uh, you know, sentenced or or put away because of it. But it, it turns out that in contemporary uh, Britain, we are in danger, aren't we, of again having a at least a de facto law against blasphemy because of um, certain extreme Muslims saying you can't critique our religion because that is racist. But it isn't racist. It's simply um, arguing with a, um, uh, you know, sort of an idea, much as you could argue against communism, capitalism, or any other form of uh, ideology. Yeah.